crazy about your crush? Chances are, they might also be into you. Here are 7 sure signs your crush likes you back. 1. They make time to see you. Some people are naturally fast and known to be the queen bees and kings of texting. But if your crush is especially shy and reserved and known to be unresponsive, but makes time to see you, this is a dead giveaway that they enjoy your company. 2. They make excuses to get close to you. Do they ever brush their arm against yours or give you hugs? Physical affection is sweet, and they might be trying to show you that they, you know, like like you. 3. They remember the small details about you. If they seem to know you more than you know yourself, not only do they like you back, but you've also found yourself a keeper. 4. They let you in on their personal life. How close is too close until it's time to make a move? When someone is being real with you, they let you in on their secrets. That includes embarrassing stories, things they aren't so proud of, or memories that still haunt them. Congratulations! This means they feel at ease with you. 5. They develop an interest in your hobbies. Maybe you love playing League of Legends or enjoy baking. If your crush who's usually not into those activities starts to play video games with you or bakes you cookies, they might be trying to impress you. 6. They act cold and distant randomly. Okay, this sounds weird, right? But sometimes people, especially shy ones, try to seem like they don't like you, fearing you don't reciprocate the same feelings. It's the whole fight or flight scenario. Deep down though, they hope you notice their absence and want you to reach out. 7. They make it obvious that they're single. Think it's too good to be true? Think again. If they haven't friendzoned you by calling you their sis or bro, then this is a sure sign. They've already made up their mind about their feelings, but do they know you have? Be bold and make the next move. You never really know unless you try. Number 1. Compliment others and in turn, people will associate those compliments with you. Have you ever heard someone speak so highly and kindly of another at a party? and you admired them for doing so. This can leave you with the impression that they themselves are kind-hearted because of how they spoke so kindly of others. When you shed others in a positive light, people will associate the traits you use to describe that person with yourself. So, if you have kind words to say about your best friend or your crush, like, she's so energetic, fun, and lovely, then your crush may start thinking that you happen to be energetic, fun, and lovely too. This is something called spontaneous trait transference and it occurs when communicators are perceived as possessing the very traits they describe in others. Two, spend more time around the person you have a crush on. The mere exposure effect can be a very useful way to get someone to like you. According to the psychological study by R.B. Zajonk, the mere exposure effect is a psychological phenomenon in which people find themselves preferring someone simply because they developed familiarity with them. When someone is repeatedly exposed to a certain stimuli, they develop familiarity with that stimuli and therefore prefer its presence. The more familiar your crush is with you, the more they'll start to notice you. Three, play copycat and mimic your crush. Do you find yourself subconsciously mimicking the gestures, movements, postures, and facial expressions of your crush when you're talking to them? This instance is called the chameleon effect. It boils down to People like people who seem familiar to themselves. If you subtly mirror your romantic interest when you interact with them, they might just start to develop a natural pull towards you. Number four, say their name often to grab their attention. Have you ever noticed that you can pay attention to a single conversation, even when in a crowded and noisy room? This is a form of selective attention called the cocktail party effect. It's when you're able to focus your auditory attention on a particular conversation while simultaneously filtering out the other noises and distractions in the room. Like for instance, when someone says your name and you immediately snap to attention so you can hear what the speaker is saying about you or what they're asking you. This effect can also be used to help your crush notice you better. While in conversation with them, try saying their name often and at the beginning or end of questions. This will grab their attention and also add a bit of charisma to your normal conversations. This offers them the sincere impression that you are interested in them and what they have to say. Number five, come across as capable and intelligent, but still human. Has it ever occurred to you that clumsiness and a little lack of grace can make you more attractive to your crush? Researcher Elliot Aronson from the University of Texas found that if you make some mistakes but still show that you're capable and intelligent, 
it may make others see you as more attractive. In the study, he had people rate fake test takers based on their attractiveness. Test takers were graded as great, mediocre, or poor. Some test takers would act clumsy and spill coffee at the end of the interview. People rated the test takers who spilled coffee as highest on the attractive scale. The research paper states, a superior person may be viewed as superhuman and therefore distant. A blunder tends to humanize him and consequently increases his attractiveness. This means that people want to see your human side. When you show that you're just a regular human being who makes common mistakes, your crush can relate to you better. And number six, hang around with a group of friends. Research shows that people tend to find others more attractive when they're in a group over being by themselves. This idea is called the cheerleader effect. Researchers Edward Vall and Drew Walker of the University of San Diego, California conducted five experiments where subjects would rate people based on photographs of them. They found that subjects rated people more attractive when they were pictured in a group of the same gender compared to an individual photograph of someone pictured alone. As the study suggests, individual faces will seem more attractive when presented in a group because they will appear more similar to the average group face which is more attractive than group members' individual faces. So if you see a cute individual at a party, try getting them to notice you first when you're chatting with your group of friends. Are there any behaviors from this list that you wanna try? Having a crush feels like you're living in a state of euphoria. However, these feelings become less intense over time and soon enough, you might even feel like you're over your crush, but sometimes it persists over time and it may start to interfere with your life. So how do you know if these feelings are not love, but actually obsession? Here are seven signs that you might be obsessed with your crush. Number one, you can't stop thinking about them. Do you usually spend all your time thinking about them continuously? Are they the first thought in your mind when you wake up and the last one when you go to sleep? If you find yourself thinking about them so much that you can't pay attention to other important aspects of your life and anything remotely associated with them reminds you of them, then this is a sign that you might be obsessed with your crush. Two, you go to great lengths to win your crush's approval. Do you try to take part in all those activities or behaviors that your crush engages in just to win their approval? Like, you might not be a party person, but because your crush likes to party, you try to do the same, even if it's something that you don't really enjoy yourself. You also try to change something about yourself to feel appreciated by your crush. It's seen that young adults go to lengths to change their appearance in order to make their crush like them. Three, you constantly analyze your interactions with them. When you meet your crush, do you notice all their behavioral cues to figure out if they like you? You often replay these interactions with them in your head. Sometimes you even rehearse events that are yet to occur with your crush. Oftentimes, you imagine scenarios where your crush is reciprocating your feelings. These events make you hopeful that your crush might like you and may want to be with you. In some extreme cases, people might keep tally of these interactions and behavioral cues. Or, you get extremely self-conscious around your crush. When your crush comes towards you, you feel extremely self-conscious. It can sometimes happen even in the imagined presence of your crush. You feel shy to the extent of feeling clumsy and awkward, and sometimes you might stutter in the presence of your crush. Admitting your feelings for them, even to yourself, might feel embarrassing. Five, you feel moody because of your crush. Does your mood for the whole day depend upon your crush? If they say hi to you or help you with your work or behave friendly with you, then you might take this interest they're showing you as a sign that they might like you. This leads you to feel very ecstatic as if you're on cloud nine, but on the days when they don't notice you or don't take your calls or seem distant, it might make you feel awful or even heartbroken. Number six, you feel out of touch with your life. When you're constantly thinking about someone, most of your attention and energy is wasted on them. This gives you very little or no time to think about any other thing in your life. Your goals, career plans, hobbies, family, friends take a back seat. You might feel like everything is out of control and that you're not the same person you used to be. Because even when you decide to let go of your feelings for them, your life somehow feels empty. 
And number seven, when you picture them, you actually crave emotional intimacy. When you picture your crush with you, you think more about having an emotional connection with them rather than physical intimacy. Your fantasy with them is usually made up of long night walks, holding each other's hands, kissing on the forehead, or talking for hours while sitting under a blanket of stars. And if you picture being with them physically, it makes you feel as if you're being intrusive and disrespectful to them. Having your crush like you back is a wonderful feeling. But if someone doesn't feel the same way about you as you feel about them, letting them go is the only option. It's way better to be with someone we feel comfortable around than being with someone who makes you feel unwanted and inadequate. Do you relate to any of these signs above? Have you noticed these signs in those around you? Can you think of some ways to get over such obsessions? You deserve a healthy relationship, one that empowers you to be more and to grow as a human being, being the best version of yourself so that you can attract the right person for you. If you're currently obsessing over someone and know that it's unhealthy, and you need someone to talk to discreetly, 